I got my teeth look like on camera. <laughs> Not even let go. Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Jude. Are you happy to be here? Because I'm happy you're here. So let's be happy together. In today's video, I'm going to talk about my reflections and thoughts on being an acute care and emergency room nurse for the past two years. Today, October 18th, which is when I'm filming this video, it has marked two years since I've worked in the emergency room. Like that is mind blowing to me. If you're new here, my name is Jude Lee or Jude. I am a 23 year old registered nurse. I've been working at a level one trauma center as my first acute care nursing experience since October 18th, 2021. And it kind of crazy that I'm actually sitting here still like it's it's just i can't even put it into words how i feel right now it's amazing it's crazy it's like a bunch of different emotions i apologize if i'm a little excited and i speak a little fast in this video you can always slow it down because you can always slow down the youtube video but <laughs> it just i'm just i want to say that first and foremost i am proud of myself for <laughs> lasting this long <laughs> in the ER low key high key it's 23 going on to 95 because the ED hmm, it will push you in this video I want to share my thoughts my experiences and basically what I've learned about working in the uh, ER I want to share how I got started what the experience has been like for me why I got into the ED I feel like that is it's, it's interesting. It's a very interesting story. So let's get into October it. October 18th of 2021, I started orientation to become an emergency room nurse. And my life has changed a lot. My perspective on life, my perspective of the healthcare system, it's just changed drastically. If this is your first time here, my name is Jude Lee, or I go by Jude. And I am a 23-year-old registered nurse working in New York City. I became a nurse when I was 20 years old, passed my NCLEX, and continued my education with my BSN. So how did I start in the emergency room? Uh, nursing professors, when you're in nursing school, they like to be like, oh, you have to have med surge experience at least one year, and then from med surge, you'll be able to get into any specialty. I'm here to tell you that is not the case. If you want to get into a specialty, you should apply for it. Now, I will do another video that details how to get into a specialty because People like to say, oh, well, you got into a specialty because it was 2021, COVID was still a problem, they needed staff, it was short-staffed, etc., etc. To be honest, hospitals are always short-staffed. Emergency room has high turnover. It's still a specialty, and some hospitals require nurses to have their bachelor's degree, require nurses to have at least one year of experience before getting into a specialty. They require one year of experience in med surge before even thinking or considering them for a specialty so i still think that getting into a specialty straight out of nursing school is actually a great thing to do um, you do not always need to do med surge i am very happy that i ended up in the er even though that was not where i wanted to be at all so let's get into that let's start off with a timeline first i graduated nursing school with my associate's degree in nursing in june of 2020 i took my nclex in august I started off my nursing career working as a COVID testing RN. That was my first job. So, ha! That was cool for a bit. It was something light, like 12 hour shifts. You got your little paycheck, swabbing people nose. I really wanted to get into a hospital. Fresh out of nursing school, my goal was NICU. That was my first choice. I wanted to be a neonatal ICU nurse. My second choice was pediatrics and labor and delivery kind of what my thought process was once i graduated nursing school nicu peds or lnd those were my three choices at this point i am a new grad nurse i have never had hospital experience my mindset changed from these are the specialties i want to i just want to get my foot in the door so I literally applied for a thousand like different specialties applications online, which now that I look back online, job applications are, 
I don't want to say a waste of time, but you are less likely, in my opinion, to get a job when you just click, click, click online. Like, it's either I talk to a recruiter or we're not getting this job. I was just clicking through. I was applying for ICU. I was applying for ED. I was applying for everything. Now, the hospital that I work at now, I actually did clinicals at. I put on my resume that I did clinicals at their facility to see if that would help me get my foot in the door. I would say that try to make relationships when you are doing your clinical rotations at certain hospitals with some of the like managers there, volunteering there, just you know getting your face known so that once you graduate and get your license, you already have your foot in the door. That's something that I wish I did back then when I was in clinicals so that at least like it would be easier to get into the specialty that I like or get a job in a hospital period. So now I am applying for everything. I also applied for a career fair. So I'd say applying for career fairs or job fairs is the best way to get your foot in the door. The best way to get yourself in a hospital position. If they're hiring for all different types of specialties in any like hospital or facility, try to call HR, try to get the dates. Make sure you go with your resume, prepare with certain interview questions, just so that you're ready. Basically, the facility I'm working at now was having a career fair for registered nurses. I got the email. I was like, okay, I'm going to go. Now, to be honest, this facility was not my first choice. I kind of went in there with my resume and just vibes. Like, I was like, if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. There, I'm ready. I have my business professional clothes on. I have my little folder with my resume that has no experience in nursing, just listed my clinical experience, which was what doing vital signs and like talking to patients. <laughs> and I was like, Yeah, like I'm ready. Like, so I get in there, thousands of nurses. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> I don't stand a chance sign in they were hiring for all different specialties so or pack you icu er i went in wanting to apply for or icu i forget the other one so i go in i'm like writing my first name last name you know the general information we'll sit down and then the lady's like hey come back so she calls me back and she's like do you want to interview for the ed and i was like okay sure because I'm under the impression that I'll have the opportunity to interview with hiring managers or nursing managers for all the different type of units, types of units. I'll wait some time before I hear back to see if I got accepted for any of the positions. Seeing all those nurses there, I was under the impression that this was going to be a long day. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll just have to wait a while before I speak or interview with anybody. But then she's like, do you want to interview for the ED? I'm like, sure, yeah. Yeah, of course I'll interview for the ED. Yeah. <laughs> I've never set foot in an ER except for like one time when I was sick. I didn't really know much about the ED. I, I never, to be honest, I never even considered ER as a specialty. That was, That's the crazy part. That was the last place that I wanted to work. Now that's the first place that I end up interviewing for. Okay, cool. Sit down with the nurse manager. At this point, we got the shakes. I'm tapping my foot. I'm trying not to act nervous. First time interviewing for a hospital position, I'm scared, I'm nervous. But you can tell, something that I tend to do when I'm nervous is two things. I either talk really fast or I act very enthusiastic. But that time I was very like calm, cool and collected. You know, I was a baby, I was innocent, I didn't know anything. Sit down with her, you know, she asked the general interview questions. What are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? What would you do in this type of nursing scenario, etc.? Then she asked me, why do you think the ED would be a good fit for you? When I tell you, I don't know where I got this answer from, but I just pulled it. I said, I believe that the ED would be a great fit for me because I am a fast learner. Fast learner at what, girl? We barely made it out of nursing school. I work well in high stress environments. The mental breakdowns I was having in school? What do you mean? <laughs> um, I will be able to work with uh, patients of various populations, etc., etc. I was really just gassing, just gassing it up. And then she's just like, like I thought she didn't like me at that point. She, hmm. Okay. And then she asked me this question. She's like, well, do you really feel ready to, do you think that you'll be able to handle the emergency room? Yes, yes, I will. Mm -hmm. Fast learner, all that. But I feel like sometimes you kind of can tell if you get a job based on how the interview goes. 
I kind of did somewhat of a good job, but I was just like, whatever. Like at this point, I don't even want to get into specialty. So it's really a win-win for me if you don't want me. It sends me back into like the waiting area where all the other nurses who are waiting for interviews are. She hands this paper to someone in there. I sit down. I'm like, okay, can't wait to interview for my next, uh, you know, do my next interview. Next thing I know, they call me back talking about some, oh, you got the job offer. You can go to HR and get yourself, uh, finish your application and getting registered for the position. So you mean to tell me I got the job on the spot? <laughs> oh, that should have been my red flag. I was just like, oh, really? And then at that point, when she told me that, I was like, oh, great. Um, okay. Um, I still like to, uh, <laughs> I was like, I still want to interview for other specialties. <laughs> and they're like, okay. And so I sit back down thinking like, yeah, I'm going to interview for the ICU next. Cause that's kind of what I really wanted to interview for amongst other specialties. This gentleman, he was like, he, he calls me over again and he's like, no, it doesn't work that way. Once you're offered a position, it's either take it or leave it. Um, I took it. And look at us two years later. So that is the story on how I got into the ER. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And I wanted to get my foot in the door and get into the hospital. <laughs> One of the things though, like during the interview, that kind of sold me on the idea of like considering, just considering the ED though was the orientation i'd say that if you're preparing to go for an interview always have questions ask about the culture ask about patient ratios ask about what type of you know things do you think that a, a nurse who's going into the specialty needs questions to show the interviewer that you're really engaged in the conversation i feel like those are good things to do because you just show the interviewer that you're interested engaged you really want to know more about the specialty you're trying to apply or get into etc i remember asking her like the patient to nurse ratios and she really told me six she said on a good day when we're well staffed when are you ever well stuffed in the ed six patients if i could have six patients in the er only do you know how beautiful that would be mm. is a reality though i won't say too much i won't say too much i also remember um asking her what the orientation is like which is another great question to ask I was like, so what, how much um, time do I get on orientation, et cetera, et cetera. And so she like tells me because I'm a new grad, I'll have like six weeks on med surge. I will go to the ICU. I will also be going to the pediatric ICU. And at that point, like that kind of got me intrigued. I was like, okay, like if I were, you know, not to get accepted into the um, ICU and they happen to hire me for the ED, happen to hire me for the ED, because I'm not thinking that I'm actually gonna get hired for the ED, then I'll have like, you know, I'll get a chance to get a taste of all the different specialties, ICU, med surge, pediatric ICU, peds, before I get to the ED. And I really like that. Um, that was kind of one of the things I was like, okay, the ED doesn't sound that bad. At this point, I get the hired for the position on the spot, which is a red flag. A red flag but i was so naive i didn't know I do my paperwork fingerprinting all this stuff i remember them like calling me like a couple weeks before like hey are you still gonna come for orientation for the position i'm like yeah i don't have a choice i have to say i really loved my orientation for um the ed i did get a chance to go on all the different specialties and i ended up liking all of them i liked working on med surge a lot more than i thought i would so because i kind of understood why Nursing professors do tell you to go to the med surge. You do get to see a lot. You get to interact with doctors. Um, it's a it's a good specialty to get into. I did like more than six weeks. I did like two months in the med surge unit. I did three weeks in ICU. I did like the ICU. Oriented on both um, surgical ICU and like neurosurgical. So it was really cool to see how i feel like there's a lot of documentation that goes on in um icu as opposed to like the er because mm -hmm. <laughs> what is documentation perfect charting mm -hmm. and then peds has my peds has my heart like 
I will always love children. I will, working with children is harder, I'd say, in the sense that, I wouldn't say harder, I'd say more challenging because you're not only taking care of the child, but also the parent as well in an aspect. I did enjoy peds, ICU. I, I just enjoyed my orientation as a whole. And now we are stepping foot into the ER. Man, I can't even tell you. First day I got there, I was looking around like, ooh, the ghetto, child. I just remember, like, it was a maze. I was like, uh, like, where do I go? There's people in the hall. I was like, why are there patients, like, in the hallway? Where where are the rooms? Like, are there not enough rooms for these patients? And it, it just wasn't clicking yet, because I was still like, oh my gosh, like, I'm finally in the ER. I went through this beautiful orientation. It's just going to be all butterflies and colorful rainbows from here. It was so cute and funny too because I would hear level one trauma, stroke code, and I'm like, I wonder what those things are. It must be so cool. <laughs> yeah. I loved my preceptor though in the ED. She she was great. Like I I loved working with her. I loved having her as a preceptor. She always had my back. I'd say my ER orientation was very at first, it was just very overwhelming a little bit just because it was nothing like what I saw on the floors. The ER was literally a different world. Screaming, <coughs> urinals everywhere, blood. It was a different world. And so I get there and I'm just like scared. Like at that point, I'm just like, what have I got in myself? Like literally the first thing I thought was, what did I sign up for? What did I do? Because I honestly, I don't know, I never been to the ER again as a nurse. Like they didn't like walk me through the unit. I didn't see what I was getting myself into. And to be honest, I'm actually very glad they didn't because I feel like if I saw what I was getting myself into working the ER, I would never be there. I would never be able to record this video for you guys two years later, like. And I'm so happy um, that I've had this opportunity. So my ER is kind of organized. They separate like critical patients who are ESI ones and twos um, in the critical care area and the trauma area. And they also have like the adult emergency room. They have pediatrics. They have like a fast track area for ESI fours and fives. During orientation, I had a lot of firsts. My first code was very traumatic, I have to say. Like I, I was shocked. I was shocked at the depth of compressions. But to actually see chest compressions in real life on a live person, like yes, you do your ACLS, you do your BLS, but on a, a, a human being is it's wow it's a very i'd say traumatic experience i had to do a lot of adjusting in times of like time management because i was so used to you get through your morning meds on med surge and your assessments you do your documentation like, uh a uh, calmer day it's more controlled in the er things are out of your control it was kind of one of the things i had to let go of my need of sense of controlling everything i want my meds to be given by this time i want my documentation to be done by this time i want to do this first that first in the er but it's a revolving door you never know what you're gonna get how many patients you're gonna get and what conditions they're gonna have by the time you know that patient is covid positive you've been in their room at least four or five times without an N95. It was just a lot in the beginning. And to be honest, I really did doubt myself. Throughout orientation, I was telling my preceptor like, oh, I don't think I could. <laughs> I don't know if I'm a last here. And I'm just proud of myself for actually getting through it. You know, I feel like we are our own worst critics. We are the ones who hold our, um, ourselves back and have these self-limiting beliefs. But I, I kid you not, like, I feel like now, two years after working in the ER, I could really work. I don't want to say anywhere, but I'm ready and flexible and open-minded to learning and going into any specialty, you know? And I feel like, to me, working in the, the ED, because I got a chance to and am working with different patient populations, I'm learning different skills every day. I'm putting in IVs on, we could go from like six months to like 95 years old. I'm, I have this like diverse patient population, which is something that I really, really appreciate about working in the ER. 
there are pros and cons in working in any specialty. And working in the emergency room, burnout is real. Compassion fatigue is real. It's physically demanding and a stressful, a stressful job. But I must say, despite complaining about it all the time and like being down, there are days, better days than others, as is every job. Um, but at the end of the day, I would say that I, if we were in the perfect NCLEX world, fully staffed, you know, had the perfect nurse to patient ratio, the ER would be, to me, a great place to work. Like, all jobs are hard, but if we had the appropriate staffing, support from it would be it would be a great place to work and learn. Um, so let's get into kind of the things I've learned in working in the ED. Number one thing I've learned is you do not need to know everything. It, a part of being a nurse is being open to learning new skills. When I graduated nursing school, I was under the impression like, oh my gosh, I'm getting into a specialty. I need to know like everything. Like I need to know strokes. I need to know asthma. I need to know conditions that I'm going to see in the ER. I need to know how to be able to put IVs in before I get there. No, you do not need to have IV certification before you get into the ED. Trust and believe you will have countless opportunities to put in IVs. And that is my favorite part of being an ER nurse. I love throwing in a line. I love when patients are like, oh, I'm a hard stick. And I get it on my first try with nice blood return. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. I love throwing in a good line on a patient. Oh, the skills you will learn in ER, you'll be fine. You're going to learn a lot. There are times too in the ED where it's like, sometimes it's like click, like things that you used to read in your textbook are clicking like, you literally see the signs and symptoms that you used to study in nursing school in certain patients, which is cool too. I love that work in the ER, it's like a puzzle. Like you're basically like an investigator. The patient comes in with certain symptoms, abdominal pain, chest pain, and we have to figure out what's going on. Why are they having these symptoms? Is it an acute, chronic? Like it's, it's very fun, I'd say, working in AD. Number two, there's never a dull moment. You could be, you know, minding your business, doing your thing. Then the phone rings and then level one traumas on the way, stab victim, gunshot victim, mass casualty event. Like you never know what will happen when you walk into the ED. Another lesson that I'd say I've learned from working in the emergency room that is I feel very important for new grad nurses or nurses who are just getting into the ER to learn is time management. Time management is so very important when working in the ED. Sometimes you start off your shift with like 10 patients, half are admitted, some are on BiPAP, others are on cardiac monitoring. You might have that one patient who's psych. You need to be able to efficiently get through your medications, document as best as you can. Some patients are bed bound. You may not always have a tech. You might have to change their pampers yourself. And it's like, you need to learn how to do the best you can in the time you have. Because you don't want to be that nurse where 10 o'clock meds are not given until 6 p.m. That's, that's crazy. Having a system, another very important lesson that I've learned in work in the emergency room, and that I feel like a lot of, it, it takes time. It takes time to develop. It's learning to prioritize. In, in nursing school, ABCs, ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. Yes, that, that's always important. But in the ED, all your patients are going to interpret emergencies in different ways. Some of your patients may think that getting a turkey sandwich is an emergency. Some of your patients just want your attention. They always tell you, oh, this is the textbook way to prioritize. But when you have 10 patients, everyone needs something. Everyone's screaming, nurse, 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 nurse. It's just like, you're just overloaded with all this stimulation like everybody needs you everybody's trying to pull you in every direction ob team is um calling you about the patient's labs need to be done ortho wants the pre-op labs to be done ed doctor wants to make sure you get a line in before the patient has to go to the cat scan this patient here is on bipap and the alarm is ringing who do you go to first airway breathing circulation is a great way to learn how to prioritize like obviously in you know you'd want to go to the BiPAP patient, if their if their oxygen saturation is dropping, yes, that would be your priority. But it's it's easier said than done. It's something I feel like you need to you need to be in the ER to fully understand 
the importance of real world prioritization. That's pretty much um, it for this video. I may or may not do a part two. Comment down below if you have any questions for me or if there's anything that you wanted me or want me to elaborate in a future video. I was super pumped to do this video and I just feel like two years after working in the emergency room, I am a much confident nurse. Um, I am confident in certain skills. I appreciate that with nursing, you do get lifelong learning. So every time I step foot into the ED, I'm learning something different. I'm, I'm improving my patient care. I'm learning a new skill that will benefit my patients, encourage patient safety. And I'm able to provide care for patients in the most vulnerable, sometimes the most vulnerable parts of their life. And it just means so much to me when they say thank you or they tell me something they appreciate about me. I do have to talk about and be realistic about the burnout, the compassion fatigue, the lack of support sometimes that you can experience when working in the emergency room. These are important conversations to have because at the end of the day, you're the nurse, right? You're the one who's providing care. So how can you take care of a patient when you barely have your stuff together? It's like, make it make sense. And I feel like a lot of times, some nurses just don't take care of themselves and in the aspect of you only peed once this shift you barely got a lunch break only 30 minutes because you're you're so busy i just feel like there are so many different things i want to talk about that i cannot talk about in this one video but i'm so happy that you watched my video i hope you found it educational informative entertaining <laughs> thank you for watching i hope that you're happy because i'm happy and i'm glad that we got to you know talk together i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video thank you again for watching please feel free to share if you are just graduating from nursing school and thinking about going to the emergency room or one of your friends who may be going through a similar experience and I'm so happy that you even tuned in. So thank you so much. Thank you for making it to the end of the video, even if you might just like skip, skip, skip to certain parts. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to talk to you guys in the future. Take care. Also, happy emergency room nurse week to all my fellow ER nurses who are not just nurses, but are techs, social workers, waitresses, all the different roles that we play on top of being an emergency room nurse, we're killing it. And even if the floors judge us for not always having our skin intact, for our patients maybe going up messy from time to time, because we don't want to always do that, of course. <laughs> and for not every single thing being documented and always putting our IVs where? In the right or left AC 20 gauge, period. They're stable and alive. So what more can you ask for? That's all we can ask for. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.